Howdy everyone, and welcome to the Tank and Spank Quick Guide to the Azure Vault. Our goal with these guides is going to be to teach you the things you need to know to be successful in Mythic Plus, and help you carry your group as a tank. We're going to go through the most important kicks, stops, and boss abilities to get you through the dungeon. The first mob to take note of in the first area are the Shrieking Whelps. You'll find them patrolling through the beginning portion of the dungeon. You should be able to completely avoid them, but if you activate them, they start a cast, with a spell that awakens nearby Crystal Furies and Crystal cons Constructs. This cast is not kickable, but you can stun the whelp. Conjured Lashers cast Mystic Vapors, which leaves a hard-hitting dot on players. There are several packs of these, and they cast a lot. AoE stops and silences are great here. Arcane Tenders cast Erratic Growth, stunning a player for up to 6 seconds. This is the priority interrupt. They also cast Wild Eruption that throws out some swirlies that hurt if you get hit and leave pools on the ground. This can be stopped. After killing the first two packs, you can jump down off the ledge on the left instead of pulling the mobs at the top of the stairs. This is a simple skip that saves you having to navigate a frustrating corridor. After you clear the tenders in the room you jumped into, Laymore will activate. Laymore's primary mechanic is Leyline Sprouts. He sends out a bunch of purple sprouts on the ground. You can destroy the sprouts by hitting them with one of Laymore's other abilities. When you destroy the sprouts, they spawn volatile sapling ads that need to be killed. If you don't destroy the Sprouts, then Laymore will one-shot most of the group when he casts Consuming Stomp. The Stomp does AoE damage that is increased by the number of Sprouts that haven't been destroyed. To destroy the Sprouts, you can hit them with the boss's Frontal Cone, Erupting Fissure, or the Explosive Brands, which he puts out on all players. For tanks, Laymore also casts Infuse Strikes, which is a hard-hitting arcane hit that leaves a 10-second arcane dot. After that boss, you'll encounter more Whelps. You can hug the wall to the right to avoid having to fight them at all. You make your way onto the next platform using a book, and you run into the most obnoxious trash in the dungeon. Rune Seal Keepers cast Icy Binding, which is a mandatory kick. There are a lot of swirls on the ground throughout this trash, so missing a binding kick is really bad. Arcane Elementals cast Waking Bane, and this is a 10 second sleep, so also needs to be kicked. Heavy Tomes from the Unstable Curator is a big damage nuke on the tank, but it's the third priority really for interrupt. Crystal Furies cast a Frontal Piercing Shard, which is the best option for stops. And the Arcane Constructs do a knockback in a Frontal Cone called Arcane Bash. This can be dodged, but it's really hard to see if you're not looking for it specifically. It looks like a blue orb on the ground right before it goes off. Once you're in Azure Blade's room, we recommend killing most, if not all, of the trash. He spawns adds around the room, and with bad luck, you can end up getting forced into a fight with other trash packs that you're not ready for. He's a boss that you can potentially pull trash onto as well, but you'd prefer to do that on your own terms and not randomly throughout the fight. You also need at least 68% trash when leaving this room if you kill everything along the way to the last boss. Azure Blade himself is a fairly straightforward fight. In phase one, he spawns one ad at a time that casts and should be interrupted. He also shoots out an orb occasionally that should be dodged. On a timer, he'll spawn four ads that channel on him, making him immune. During this time, he pulses AoE damage and shoots out waves of orbs. Kill all four adds to be able to engage the boss again. For tanks, the boss does a frontal cleave, arcane cleave. The next sets of trash have tons of jumping frogs. As long as your group is capable of dodging big swirls, you can pretty much pull as big as you want in this area. The only dangerous ability comes from the draconic breakers, which occasionally cast a shoulder charge, dashing at players and knocking them back. Then it's on to back-to-back -back bosses. First is Telosh Greywing. She casts a lot of frost bombs that put circles on everyone in the group that go off after a short wait, leaving ice on the ground. You'll want to drop these patches near your old patches as you start to use up the space around the ring. You also need to keep the big vault runes on the ground clear of ice. Every minute or so, Telesh will jump to the middle platform and cast Absolute Zero. It does a ton of AoE damage to everyone, which is reduced by half if you're standing in one of the runes. This is a spot in which your healer is probably going to use cooldowns. Her last ability is Icy Devastator. She channels on a player, dealing damage to that player as well as anyone within 8 yards. So if you get targeted with the cast, move out of the group. Then it's immediately on to Umbral Skull. Anytime you move, you gain a stacking debuff that slows you by 7% per stack. You must stay still for 10 seconds or get dispelled to drop stacks. Umbral Skull occasionally casts Unleashed Destruction, which is unavoidable AoE, Crystalline Roar, which is a frontal aimed at a random player, and Dragon Strike, which is a hard-hitting magic tank buster that leaves behind a dispellable dot. He also summons purple orbs that move around the room and deal a large amount of damage to anyone they hit. At 75, 50, and 25% health, Umbral Skull shatters, which drops a bunch of crystals around the room. After 20 seconds, any of these crystals that aren't killed explode doing a ton of damage. 
Killing the crystals and not getting hit by mechanics, typically while slowed, is the key to this fight. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching and good luck in those keys.